In order to study how action potentials are generated, we will first insert two electrodes into the neuron, one to record the membrane voltage and another to inject current that can be used to push the membrane voltage toward more positive or depolarizing or more negative or hyperpolarizing voltages. Let's look at what happens when our model neuron is stimulated. The first two stimuli shown here are insufficient to depolarize the membrane past the threshold level. Thus, no action potential is generated and the voltage quickly returns to the resting level. However, the final stimulus is large enough to generate an action potential. In this experiment, the current injected into the cell, the stimulus, is represented in the upper graph and the voltage response below. Notice that a hyperpolarizing current drives the membrane potential in a negative direction, with the voltage response of the cell directly proportional to the magnitude of the injected current. The same relationship is true for small injections of depolarizing current. The voltage response of the cell is directly proportional to the magnitude of the injected current. If the stimulus is sufficient to push the membrane potential past the firing threshold for the neuron, such as the second stimulus in this example, then an action potential is generated. Depolarization of the membrane past threshold sets in motion changes in membrane conductances that eventually leads to generation of the action potential. Note that the action potential is an all or none event. Once generated, its amplitude does not vary as a function of the size of the preceding stimulus. Any supra-threshold stimulus will produce an action potential of similar amplitude and duration.